All right, welcome to the 2021 RPOD 190. We're gonna start right in the back corner here. And then each corner of the trailer, you've got these stabilizer jacks. So you'll get a little uh, kind of wrench that'll run these down, contact the ground, another turn or two to firm them up and they'll just get rid of any sort of bounce or sway in the trailer that you might have walking through it. In the storage compartment here, as well as all of your storage compartments, you do have these magnetic latches. Just hold them open, they hold themselves open. Inside here, the storage compartment does see straight through to the other side. It is also accessible from underneath your dinette. And in here, we have your shore core store. Shore core store. So you can see at the end here, you've got that one notch in the bottom. If you open up this port right here, it'll line up with that notch on that prong there. Compress it into place, little eighth turn locks it in, and then the threads on the back there really lock it right down. Following the cord back, you've got a standard 30 amp end right there. Most campsites are gonna have that. You can plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter to go down to a standard outlet. So plug it in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge. So like I said, you can just plug straight on in and good to go. Right beside it, we've got a cable and satellite inlet. So a coax cable will plug into there and fire up at your TV location. Right underneath it here, we've got the uh, sewer connection for your gray tank. So the gray valve indicates gray tank. Gray tank is filled from your sinks as well as your shower. So when it comes to dumping your tanks, I'm just gonna pop this cap off. You can see those two ears there, how it attaches, the same way your hose sewer hose will attach. It presses on, turns into place, and that's that. When you're ready to dump it, you'll pull that valve out, allowing that tank to drain itself out. On the other side of the wheel well here, we've got your other sewer connection. So this is for your black tank, which is filled from your toilet, indicated by the black valve. Same connection, just pop it off, there you go. Sewer hose will attach on, lock it into place, and slide that valve open. When you're dumping your tanks, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do this black one first, just because it is your toilet, it's going to be your dirtiest water. Let that drain out completely, and then we'll go to the gray tank afterwards and dump that last. Comes, uh, you know, sink water, shower water, typically cleaner than your toilet. Down a little bit more, we've just got your low point drains here, so you can just turn that valve, allows the water to then run out, right? So if you're leaving your trailer for a while, or if you're getting ready to winterize the unit, you can just open these up, allow the water to drain over the water lines, keeping things from freezing. In your slide out here, you just got these two little ports. Those are just vents for your fridge, nothing back there for you to worry about really. Right here's the exhaust for your furnace. So whenever you're running your furnace, you just wanna make sure nothing's drooped over that, it does get hot. Right here up top, we've got your fresh water tank connection. So you take a water hose, stick it into there, turn on the water and that'll fill up your fresh water tank. The drain for your freshwater tank is just right down here. So just give me a second here. Right on the end of that uh, little threaded connection there, you have this cap. That'll just thread on, closing off that tank, pull it off when you're ready to drain it. All right, so we'll just thread that back into place for you. All right. Right below your freshwater tank fill is a city water connection. So you take the same water hose, plug it into there, turn on the water, and that'll pressurize the water lines throughout the unit. And on the front here, you've got your water tank. So this keyway, you're just gonna line that up, pop it open. Controls for firing it up with propane are just inside the unit. However, outside here, we do have the control for your electrical element. Before you ever turn it on, whether it be with that electricity or the propane, which is inside, we're just gonna hit that relief valve right here. That bit of water coming out that is letting us know that this water tank is full, it's safe to be fired up and we're good to go. So at that point, we could hit that switch, turn it on, or we'd go inside to use that switch. But once we get inside and go over the propane firing uh, procedure, I will mention a reset. The reset button that I'll refer to is just right in here. All right. Also right underneath here, we've got this little sewer, sewer hose compartment. So it just has this little end cap there. You can open that up, pop it off. You can see we've got your sewer hose in here. So like I said, same two ears as your caps, just attaches the same way. Once that thing is fully extended, that is about 20 feet long. The cap, just kind of press it into place. And a little turn, locks it in. And there you go. If you wanted to, you could get a little lock in there just to lock it in there. To the front, this little red box here is your battery disconnect switch. So you can have that pointing up. You can see it's off. It's your battery disconnected from the unit, or you can have it on for connecting it, of course. The battery itself is just stored right in this box here. So as long as you're plugged in through that short cord in the back, through the seven pin into your tow vehicle, that battery is charging for you. Right in this little cover here, just open that up. We've got your propane tank. So standard barbecue style tank. Just turn that to open it up and you're good to go. 
when you're moving this cover for when it's time to go and get that tank refilled. You've just got the little wing nut back here as well as a little elastic along the bottom. As we've seen, you got the seven pin holder right there on the side with of course the safety chains, power tongue jack, press the bottom of it there, turns on that little light and then up goes up and down is down. Over to this side of the unit, we've got this little compartment here. Again, magnetic latch holds it open. And we've got a bunch of your accessories in here. So here's the water hose that we provide you with, as well as that park adapter I was telling you about. It's a 15 amp standard plug-in at your house, 30 amp for your shore cord. Back here, we've also got the jack for all of your stabilizers, right? So it just attaches onto there, spin them up, spin them down. And right here is a manual override for your tongue jack. So in the front, if your battery were to ever die, you will lose control of this thing. You can just pull off that back cap there, slide that guy in. And it does have the little stud that it falls onto. You can run your power tongue jack up or down manually. All right. In here, we've also got the little barbecue stand. So you're just going to take these wings, slide them out, and they kind of fall into place there. We'll set that up right here. You also get this little counter spot, I guess. Touch the same way. So basically, you just have that little channel in the back there. Lock in that top piece. Falls into place and holds itself up. Do be mindful that you're not sat on your spray port or your outlets. And then we can take the barbecue here and pull it out. So you can see it is on four feet here. So if you wanted to just put it down on a table, you can do so. It does also have the little slides in the side. So we can just line those up with the holder, slide it in. All right. And then you just have these little pins on the side there attached to the end, just so that it's not flying off on you on both sides. And then we can just grab our propane hose here. So you've got the same connection on underneath the trailer as well as right here where you've got this valve. With that valve open, allowing the flow of propane, you cannot undo your collar there. You have to close off that valve and then you can undo the collar to remove it. So right in the back of the stove here, you've got that little regulator. Again, we're just gonna pull that collar back, press it into place, lock it in, open up that flow. And then on the end of your propane line, which is right down here, same thing, close them out that valve, push back the collar, push our hose in, open it up, and we're good to go. For lighting it up, just to make things easier, we can pop this off, and then you can actually see once that flame's lit up. So there we go. All right, when we're done, I'm just gonna turn it to off, and that's that. And then we're gonna start at the trailer, close off that propane, pop the collar off, make sure that dust cap's back on there. Pull it off of the back. And then I like to just kind of loop it around and attach it to itself. It just ensures that absolutely nothing's getting in there. All right. We'll throw that thing back away. In here you've also got the blue coiled up hose here. So that is for your spray port. You can just open that up. Same sort of collar, you push it back, press the hose in, locks into place, and that is tied right into your cold water line. So you have the full hose here with just a standard garden hose end. Like I said, that was just cold water. There is no hot water out of that. And in here, we've also got the manual override for your awning. So I'll show you that once we get there. That end is just gonna attach in, super simple. We'll tuck everything back up in here again. Pull these pins out. Slide the stove off. Tuck that back away. And then when holding this bottom bar, you can lift up on the arm, and fold it in. Same thing on the other side, fold it in, and then up 
find out. Let's store that back away. And that's that. Alright. Okay, so underneath it, you've also got the GFR protected outlet. So if you wanted to make, you know, coffee or tea outside, you've got the power for that. Black tank flush here. So you may notice over time you've gone, you've dumped out your black tank. You know for a fact it is empty, but your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically, that's going to be some debris in the tank just hung between the two probes. So what you can do is take your water hose, plug it into here, turn on that water with your black tank valve open, and that'll just flush out that tank for you, cleaning it out and usually giving you a better reading after. Up top here, we've got your two exterior speakers, as well as your porch light. Here's just the other end of your rear storage compartment. Like I said, it does see straight through. And then in the back of the unit, we've just got the spare tire for you. Alright. So for your assist handle, just up 90 degrees, slides into place. You can grab the step, up and out, and fold that last step over. Now these door handles are a little bit finicky, you kind of have to push them in and then you can pull it. I find if you just pull, you're kind of just fighting yourself. Okay. Now as we come on inside, first thing right in the entrance, we've got your fire extinguisher there. So standard pull a pin, point and shoot. Your converter's right down here, so press the top and center, pops open. We've got all of your breakers on the left right here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it'll sit in the middle, so just turn it off and then back on. And then all of your fuses over on the side there. So this binder and pouch has all of your remotes, all of your owner's manuals, all of your keys, everything like that just in here for you. USB charging as well as a power outlet. Of course the TV, which is just on 12 volt power right there. All right. And then right up in the top, we've got kind of your light switches here. So the one on the right there is your interior lights, does all of your interior lights. The porch light there turns on that little amber light outside. LED light is the awning strip under your awning. And then for your awning, it's just right here on the left, press and hold extend. Now as that awning is opening up, you can already kind of see on that angle that it's coming out at, it's going to hit this door. So just make sure this door is either mostly or completely closed when you're bringing it out. there so once you have the awning out like this you can come to the head of it and just have that little latch right there just pull that out and then it pulls the arm out then you're going to turn it 90 degrees so that this latch comes inside and then you can pull out the leg so up on that guy there and then you can stick the little foot in there and then the top in and then lock it into place all right and then you're just going to take the rest of the arm, push it out. And then this latch on the inside here just flips around, flips over, locks into place, holding the arms steady. Okay. Same arm over here, so the latch out, turn it so that the latch is inside, extending the leg, locking it into place, and pushing out. Now this is where you'd be changing your pitch, right? So by changing the length of these arms, we change the pitch of the head of the awning. If you had them both fully extended, the awning would be sitting level. We've got them at different lengths right now, changing the pitch, allowing water rain to then run off. Right. If you wanted it both lower, you can do both lower as well, just to get you a bit more shade. And that's that. So if we're putting it back away, we're just going to flip it back around, pull this foot out of here, slide it back into place, turn it back around, and slide it back home. Okay. Same thing over here. Then we'll come back inside and press and hold the track. That awning will make its way back in. Again, being mindful of your door here, it does contact if you leave it open. Alright, 
Simple as that. So after our awning, we'll press and hold the bottom of slide room. That's out, it'll make its way out. Once that slide's fully extended, you'll just hear some whines from the motors and then they'll stop themselves. That's that, all right. So right in the center here, you can see you are pre-wired for solar. And then on the left side here, you've got your stereo. So the top and right there, the mute button turns it on. FM, so AM, FM, you can cycle through all of your different channels there. All right, so you have the three different FMs, two different AMs. Seeks are just right down here, all right. Press it once, automatically searches, press and hold, switches into manual, and you search manually. knob is of course your volume there press it and you can go into all of your settings all right zone one is your inside set of speakers zone two is your outside set and you can see once they're dead they go red from blue all right bluetooth be connecting to your phone auxiliary is just right in the front here and that's that press the power button is mute press and hold to turn it off all right your dinette section here so it does have the travel latch for the table. Just a little quick connect just to pull that off. Slide the latch over. And then you can just pull up on the table. Pull these legs out. And store them wherever you like them. And then you see those three black blocks there. We're just going to be resting the table down on them. And then the back cushions come in to fill the center. done we'll put the backs back in place and the seats back there and then the table comes back up pressing the leg into place while we're in here this seat comes up that screw comes out and you've got access to that rear compartment same idea on either end of the bench seats here as you can see that access to the compartment there and we're going to take the table, line it up with the legs, and just kind of press it into place, and that's that. We'll grab the travel latch, slide it back over, and clamp her down. Right. The blinds throughout the unit, you just kind of pull them down. I sit where you leave them. As for the windows back here, you're just pulling back on that tab, sliding it open. The bug screen is separate. Right. To the kitchen, you do have the soft cover. It is just plastic, so nothing hot on there. And then of course, hot and cold water. Right up above the sink, you just got the little center push button turns on that light. A little bit of storage up above as well. Power outlet up here, so it is GFI protected. For your stove, you just got the glass cover, just folds up. Turn the knob over to high. Hit it with a lighter, she fires right up. Right. Temperature selection just going downward, right to off. Right. Below it, we've got your microwave, your convection oven, right? So all the controls just on the side here, pretty straightforward, standard, just like home. A little bit of storage underneath the sink, just do be careful, it is a small spot. The Pet Edition unit does come with the dog bowls, and outside we do have a leash latch as well, kind of right underneath the steps there. Coming down the hallway, right here we've got your LP detector. So if there's ever a propane leak in the trailer, propane's heavier than air, it sits on the floor. This guy detects it and starts going off. And right up here we've got your monitor panel. So on the bottom right we've got your water pump. Turn that on, turns on your water pump, drawing out of your freshwater tank to pressurize the water lines. On the bottom left, we've got your water heater control for propane. So you turn that switch on, that light will come on, letting you know the ignition sequence will start. The light will go out once the sequence has started, and it'll try that three times. And if it comes on after that and stays on, it's letting you know it hasn't fired up. At that point, you'll be going out and using that reset button that we'd shown you. Stood right here, I could hear that one click of the igniter, and that flame is now warring, so we know that thing's good to go. Right up on the top here, we've got your battery, so your actual monitor systems. 
press and hold that battery button until your battery charge level. So because we're plugged in right now, we're currently C for charging. G would be good, F is fair, and L is low. For your fresh tank, as you fill that up, that'll go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. All right. right down on the floor here, you've got your central vac. So with this guy open like that, you just take your hose and stick it into there to fire it up. I don't believe the unit comes with a hose because they do give you the little foot lever. So you can see as the sticker indicates, you just lift up on this guy here. And that turns it on, right? So the idea being that you just sweep up, bring it to right here, and that'll suck it all up for you. Uh, hose, of course, would just attach into there if you wanted to do so. And then you can just pull it out, attach your bag back there, and you're good to go. Power button just right there for turning that on. And up from it, we've got your fridge. So just that little thumb latch there, push it up, open it up. You've got your freezer compartment in the top there with the fridge down the bottom. And in the top here, you've got your control. So on the right there, you've got your power button to turn it on. In the center, we've got mode. So with that kind of bars right there, you can see it's got the auto and the AC illuminated. That's letting you know it's on automatic and it's going to choose AC. It could be on auto and flip that blip over to LP gas, letting you know that it's chosen to run the LP gas most likely because you've lost AC power. If you're looking to run solely off of the propane, the LP gas, you can hit mode and you can get solely into LP there or you can get solely into AC right there. Now most typically you're just going to want to leave it on auto so that way it's keeping cool as long as it can whenever it can. Temp set right here so you can see we currently got it on six, maximum is nine with one being cold so as it says right there one is cold, nine is coldest. A little bit of storage down the side here. All right, little closet spot up there. A couple of drawers. A little bin down here as well. Right here at the end of your bed, we've got your GFI protected outlet. So test on the bottom, reset on top. So if you ever have an outlet that doesn't work, this is a good thing to come and check first. In here, you've got your emergency exit. So you just take this bar, stick it outside, toss it right out, pull that red tab and hop on out. Storage across the top here. Right up here, we've got your smoke detector as well. Right. On this side of the wall here, uh, I think you've got a TV backer down low. You do not have it up high. You can hear that difference in the sound, All right? 12 volt outlets, that's the same plug-in that you'd have for your TV at the other end there. And on the side here, so right in the center, we've got your antenna outlet. On top is your cable and satellite outlet. If we're turning on that antenna, you just got that little button right there. It turns on that red light will also improve your stereo signal as well. All right? Thermostat here. So we'll press that bottom bar, wakes it up, start from off, and then it'll go into your fan speed. So fan on low, that's of course just your fan moving air low. All right? After low, we have high. Again, that's just moving air with the high fan. After fan, we can hit it again. It'll come into cool on high. So that high fan will run all the time using the cooling in and out as needed. Same idea for your low. If you have it on auto, that'll cycle the fan in and out as needed as well, right? So rather than just cycling the compressor and having the fan turning on and or having the fan staying on all the time, this will turn it off and on as needed. Same idea for your high. Temperature selection just with your arrows here. With this air conditioner going, all you've got is the two louvers here. So you can close it off, it shoots all of its air to the front here close that off, shoot all the tear back here, or you can have them both open and it's just dumping. After cool, hit that bar again, it'll come down into heat. Again, just select your temperature. That air conditioner will turn off and the furnace will turn on. The furnace itself is actually just right in this little storage cubby down here, right here. So if you wanted to, you could stick your head in there and in the bottom left corner, you could actually see the little glowing flame of the furnace going. Sat right here, you can hear the igniter go though. We know that thing's fired up. We know it's good to go. After heat, we'll hit the bar again, cycles back to off and just kind of cycles back around. And then we'll make our way into your bathroom. Right inside, right on the wall, we've got your light switch, toilet down here the little foot lever right front and center. GFR protected outlets on the roof vent here. So just this little knob, pull it down to unlock it. And then you can turn it to open. Then in this corner here, you've got your fan speeds. So one, 
two, three, and four. And then of course, off, okay? Turn it to close. And then just press that back up to lock it in. Madison cabinet, and right down here. We do also provide you with a little sample of uh, toilet chemical. Just helps keep things clean, running right. And in here, we've also got a toilet paper holder. Uh, we don't install that simply because it is a personal preference as to where you'd like it. And your sink, of course, hot and cold water, a little bit of storage underneath it as well. Just do be mindful of the drain that's down there. And then your shower, the standard head and hose, hot and cold water, of course. And then this little concoction down here is just a little diverter valve. So when you first go to get a hot shower, you're of course gonna have that couple minutes of cold water. When you're out dry camping and you're not hooked up to city water, every bit of water you can save is important. So what you can do is you can just have that little knob in the back there pointing down. So that cold water that would be running through your shower just straight down into your drain can now be shot back into your fresh water tank to be reused, All right? When you're well with the hot water here and you're ready for a shower, you just slide that knob so that it comes up and that'll run it through the shower as per normal, All right? Alrighty, and I do believe that's about it for this little guy. If you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call, 204-237-7272.